there. We thought we was big time. If we come in here about four o'clock and they had break, we could sit on the old crank boxes and eat peanuts and drink an RC with daddy. That was big time. But then as soon as the break bell went off, you was out the door and we'd come out here into the back in the warehouses and that's where we hung out. And I got you some good stories on them warehouse stories, but yeah, but that's on down the road here. But yeah, when we used to come up, me and Rich would be <laughs> at that great age, you know, 10, 11, 12. Exploring. <laughs> but it'd be summertime and we'd get on mother's nerves and then she'd send us over here to daddy. And that wasn't a pretty sight when you had when he had to stop work to discipline you. Get out yeah, of here. He, he looked at us and said, "From now on, he says when I leave for work, y'all leave the house. I don't care where you go, what you do, and you better not come home till after I'm home." So yeah. we would roam the woods and the shops oh, yeah. and all. But we, it was a, we got in a lot of good good trouble and good memories. But here was the thing. If you come from Daddy's, we'd come across the road on our bikes. Once you got over to Grandfather's house, because he had a putting green in the back, you better get off your bike and push it on that little bit of sidewalk he had. Because if you got on his putting green, then you'd get in more trouble for getting on his putting no green. Doubt. I told my mama one time and one time only that one of her whippings didn't hurt. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I found out very quickly that well, that wasn't you, the thing to do. you seen in our cabinet in there that uh, Winston Cup champion belt buckle and belt. Oh, I had the, the Winston Cup uh, uh, tattooed, <laughs> the reverse <laughs> tattooed on the backside of me. Brandon. <laughs> so Matt Kenseth gets in the car at Nashville. Let, let's go back and talk about how Matt Kenseth got in the car. Well, I think this is a how did that story. come about? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, when we had the problem on Saturday night, we went back to the motel, and we all went out to eat, and the whole team was eating, and we were talking about what we were going to do and how we are going to do this, and and we needed to find a driver, and everybody kind of put some names out there, and and Kathy Virtue put some some names out there, and we were sitting at the table, and I said to my dad, um, you know, a lot of the names that have been brought out, people have done this already, and we're trying to build this team to go win races and 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 become a force down here. We we got to look for somebody that's going to be able to take us there. I said, I hate to say this, but if, if if we run the team and we hire Matt Kenseth to drive the car, I think Matt can do it. And my dad was completely silent at the table, completely <laughs> silent. And, uh, it, and and everybody had a, had a conversation, and, and, and when supper was over, my dad came to me and said, Robbie, do you, do you, really, do you really feel that that's what you want to do? And I said, well, Dad, I really feel like I'd like to drive it myself, but that ain't the right thing for where our team is right now. Really? You know, our, our team would be best if we could team up and have somebody that we have complete confidence in and, and go race. And he says, well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but if that's what you want to do, then, then you go do that. You're going to have to get a hold of him and see if he'll, he'll drive the car. And, and Had you ever talked to him no, about, about no, what? No, no. No, no. And what's really funny is. There was no grand master plan? No. For the so we got back. We, we did all our stuff at Bristol, and we, we came back. Uh, and got home, and on Sunday morning, I I was I was gonna try to get a hold of Matt. So I call I call his house, and I get a hold of his. I think at that time it was his mom, and told me she told me he was racing in Rougemont, North Carolina, in a late model race. So I called over to Rougemont to the track and left a message that I needed Matt to give me a call, and I gave him my name and number, and told him I'd like him to have me call as soon as he could. Well, it took a little while, and all of a sudden Matt calls. He says, Robbie, what what you know? what do you need you know yeah. and uh and we got talking and, and and he's like are you i told him what i wanted to do and he was sort of like are you sure <laughs> i said yes this is what i want to do and and at, and at that yeah. time he had just accepted a asa ride for jerry gunderman up in wisconsin and i think he might have ran, ran a race or two i can't remember how it was but i think he really i think at that time he really wanted to do what we were doing and wanted to come try this and um this was an opportunity, and I mean, he, him and his, his dad finished racing up at Rougemont, and they drove down that night, and we, we fit him in a car and made, made, the, made the deal, and, and uh, he said he was going to go back and talk to Jerry about his ASA ride, and, and he would meet me at Nashville. That's how it all, that's, that's how it all started. You know, we were pretty close to Allen, mm -hmm. right? And, and we worked with Allen. Like I had the Bilstein shop truck was in our parking lot all the time. They stored it there. And I 
would go in and build my shocks, and then I would build shocks for Alan and run them on the dyno and really? talk to Alan about stuff. And we were we went to dinner all the time. You know, they, he would come out to the house at the lake, and he would get on the pontoon boat, and he'd swim with the kids and stuff. You know, we we had Kyle and him and I, and the families had good relationship. So that leading into, you know, the events that happened, and, and Felix was... I believe Felix was the executor to the, to the estate. And when everything happened, you know, I mean, Felix really was, he felt the loss probably more than any of us, and we all felt it, you know. And, you know, when he was getting things buttoned up over there and going through things and, and you know, and he would come back and say, You've got, you know, you've got a seat in every car. You, you know, you're spending all this money. Alan only had one seat that he took and put it in every car he had. And, you know, Alan did it this way, and you know, and and so the the pressure to Alan won the championship. And and you know, we finished whatever top five or something like that, which was great for us. You know, I I think. I I think it just changed the dynamics with us, right? And you know he, you know F Felix got the, you know looking at the the bills and stuff like that, and not being a, you know a, a, a in the trenches car guy. Sometimes he didn't have all the information he had to make decisions, and he would go off on you, and then realize then when you talked it through, he said, oh, "Okay, I didn't know that was that. This was brake calipers, or this was valve springs, or w whatever." But it just got to be picking on each other a little bit too much, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think it was, um, you know, he and I, he he had had his fill of me, and I was I was just, you know, tired of of just things, right? right. I mean, we all lost a friend, right? But I think that that just changed the dynamics, and you know, we were in. We blew up at Charlotte in the 600, and and we were tenth in points. And so I'd given all the guys the day off on Monday, and my brothers Roman and Ryan, we worked taking the motor out of the car, you know, getting it ready for when they everybody come in on Tuesday. You know, we just. And uh, Felix come in and and said that we were complacent and Ooh. we were, you know, <laughs> we were accepted mediocrity and fired all three of us the same day. Mm -hmm. And we were in there working on a holiday. 